Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Frank Kelly. I'm a sales account manager with Storm Technology. I'm joined today by my colleague James Donahue, a senior CRM consultant. Today we are going to tell you about Storm's vision of the digital enterprise with particular emphasis on the digital customer engagement. This is going to take approximately 30 minutes. We appreciate you spending the time with us. Before I hand over to James, I would like to take a few minutes to give you a brief overview of today's objectives and a company overview of Storm. So today, the role of the, we're going to be covering the role of the digital enterprise, today's digital customer expectations, and how to bridge the gap with Dynamics 365. Leaving today, you should be able to understand the importance of the digital enterprise in the context of your customers and understand how Dynamics D65 and its capabilities can help you support that. Storm Technology is an Irish-owned technology and solutions provider with a focus on productivity in the enterprise space and enabling our customers to maximize their return from their investment in technology. We have an expansive range of business solutions and services. Our customers are drawn from a wide range of commercial and public sector organizations, and we focus on enabling their employees to maximize their efficiency and effectiveness through digital technology. We have 300, over 300 solutions. Storm have been working in this area in the last 20 years we have designed, developed, and implement, implemented, as I said, over 300 business solutions in 90 loyal clients. With over 100 staff members, of most of whom are involved in delivering, delivery sorry, of customer projects and support, and we operate from our offices in Dublin City Centre and in Galway. So before I hand you over to James, I'd just like to go through the, the, the four pillars of the digital transformation that we in Storm envisage as, as our vision. The digital employee, staff want to be served and enabled as if they were at home. They're looking for cloud, mobile devices. They want to be on the move, engaging with customers, allowing them to be more agile while striving business and ideas. The digital operation, supporting the digital employee, Companies and staff want the technology solutions like cloud and mobility, or sorry, a mobile and application modernization in order to support the digital employee. Digital intelligence, data. We're going to be talking about the importance of being a data-driven organization and how data can help support and drive businesses. And then finally, the digital customer engagement. And at this point, I would like to hand you over to my colleague, James Donahue, who will be driving the presentation. Uh, thank you, Frank. Good morning, everyone. Um, so just to continue where Frank left off on the topic of, uh, on the, topic of uh, the digital enterprise, I just want to relate this back to how it affects your customers and more so your customers' experience when they engage with you. In the past, you know, organizations uh, who try to improve customer satisfaction may have done so at the expense of productivity within the organization. Uh, and as you're aware, you know, this can be quite time-consuming unless you have the right tools, uh, systems, and processes in place. Um, and, what this is, you know, and this is what the digital transformation brings to the table for organizations. It provides the tools which enable uh, your employees to engage with your customers uh, effectively, uh, automate aspects of the customer engagement process, uh, which works twofold. It improves your customer experience, which in turn increases customer satisfaction uh, and it improves productivity within your organization. This is achieved by using clearly defined processes which aid in providing a consistent and personalized customer experience, but at the same time providing the agility to adapt and accommodate to the ever-changing needs of your customers because whatever is the norm today may become outdated tomorrow by a new technology or trend. Um, what I aim to do over the next 25 minutes or so is to elaborate a bit more on this and you know, show you how you can empower your organization to deliver this digital customer experience using Dynamics 365. So if we look at the digital landscape uh, in Ireland, you know, we're actually more advanced than we give ourselves credit for. 
you know, if you look at the statistics, 87% of Irish people are online. 90% of over 25 access the internet by mobile phone. <clears throat> in a recent study by ADEX on the growth of the digital ad spend in Europe, Ireland actually topped the poll with a 29% surge in digital ad spend in 2015, which equated to 340 million. Interestingly enough, 40% of that was actually spent on mobile advertising. And it, again, if you look at the, the, the internet economy value is going to reach 21.1 billion in 2020, uh, which is 150% growth, uh, you know, over a six-year period. You know, and then if we look on, you know, if you look at add social into the mix, there's some very interesting insights here too. 2.5 million use Facebook. That, you know, that's almost 56% of the Irish population, which is currently around 4.6 million at the minute. And um, users spend on average just over uh, five and a half hours a week on Facebook alone. Uh, and if you look at you know the likes of Snapchat, uh, we're in the top three of, uh, countries in terms of usage, you know, on a par with the likes of USA and UK. Um, so that leads me on to identifying you know some of the main characteristics of, of your customers today. So you know your customer today is technology savvy. You know that infographic there ju just proves this. Um, they're always connected. So how many of you you know uh, check your emails while eating breakfast in the morning before you head to work? use your phone in public transport or even on the train. So the next, even the next time you're on the train, just have a look around uh, and see how many people actually have their heads buried in their phones. And the, you know, the chances are you're going to be 99% uh, of people are. And you know, your, your customers, they are more informed and more empowered than ever before. 78% of shoppers research online and purchase offline. You know, co consumers now are looking to, to seek some sort of social approval and before they purchase as well. Um, socially savvy customers tend to have clout. Um, what clout means is that you know the reach they have in terms of audience, the number of friends, followers. You know, you see these uh, vloggers and Snapchatters that review products nowadays. You know, they have you know followers in the masses, um, and they have the influence and are likely to have people listen to their opinions. Um, and all it takes is one tweet, post, or, or Snapchat to significantly damage your brand. Uh, and you have to be able to respond to this quickly to mitigate against it and reduce the negative impact that it might cause. So our customers you know, also expect a consistent, efficient and personalized omni-channel experience, you know, be it phone, email, social or SMS. Regardless of the channel, you know, they expect that consistency and personalization. Um, consumers they expect their needs to be met instantly. You know, People are so used to getting answers very quickly, they literally just take out their phone and search on Google. And when it comes to things like customer care uh, and getting you know, feedback from, from, um, from organizations, they expect that to be you know, the same as well. They, they expect instant results. Um, and then you know, our customers, they're, they're leaving clues and they're le leaving a trail of digital footprints. And these digital footprints include data um, about what they clicked on on their website, what they searched for, what they liked, where they went, their location, their IP address, what they said, and what they said about you. And all this data can, it, you know, can and is being used in behavioral and target marketing. You know, the avalanche of customer data, you know, uh, this avalanche of customer data is key to understanding uh, a customer's present state, which is the precursor to being able to develop and deliver relevant experiences. Uh, and, and lastly, you know, customers are easily turned off by marketing mistakes. You know, if you've ever got an email that's yeah, marketing emails that's completely irrelevant. I mean, the first thing I know I do is I unsubscribe. So, you know, organisations can't afford to be making those mistakes uh, because you know it, it, it's hard enough to actually acquire your customer, yet alone you know, uh, you know, keep them. So, you know, when we talk to um, customers. Um, some of the, you know, we, we work with an, um, a number of different uh, organizations across, that operate across multiple different industries and sectors, and we've identified some of the common hurdles that are holding them back. Um, I'm sure most of you probably relate to at least one, if not more, of these, um, these issues. So the first one is disconnected legacy systems. In the past, there were, you know, organizations tend to have a separate system for each business function. You know, we could take, for example, marketing. They could use things like MailChimp and SurveyMonkey. The sales team might use Excel sheets or you know some sort of a CRM system. 
and then operations will, you know, will have their own ERP systems. And then you, know, you throw customer care into the mix and they have their own system. And then you know, scattered around as well, you'll have you know, Excel sheets, access databases, uh, documents being stored on network drives and so on. So it's a kind of a fragmented uh, state in terms of where your systems uh, and your data uh, are stored, which leads us on to data quality. Um, poor data quality um, due to you know, undefined processes for capturing and, uh, and validating that data. And sometimes you know, with the sheer volume of the, the separate systems and, and the, the volume of data, it can become quite unmanageable. Um, and if you try to consolidate some of that data from these different systems, it may be difficult due to uh, things like different data models and data sets depending on the systems that you use. So again, this leads into the, the inability to segment your marketing and target, execute target marketing. Um, with silo systems and poor data, you know, can lead to fragmented communication. Not being able to segment your data and means that campaign sentiment more generic because you don't have that micro level detail to target specific customer segments based on their, on their buying trends. So essentially what you're doing, you know, some organizations are just flinging mud at the wall and seeing what sticks um, and the content isn't relevant or personalized. You also run the risk of over communicating um, to your customers because you know, if customer care are sending out emails, but then sales are sending out emails and marketing are sending out emails, it can be very hard to keep track of how many, you know, all the touch points. And, you know, you, there's under communication, but there's also over communication considerations. Um, and where it gets, you know, where it gets difficult is, you know, it's okay for marketing because if they, say, for example, buy a, a, a purchase marketing list where they can just, you know, send out an email to a list of leads. When you're actually trying to communicate to your existing customers, it becomes increasingly hard because all that information that we just mentioned in the legacy system is all, is all disconnected, and you don't have that you know uh, connected view of the customer. Um, which leads on then to you know reporting and metrics, and it's like the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. If the data is of poor quality, then the reports are going to be likewise. So typically, if you wanted to get a glimpse of the truth. You would require probably you know half a day to extract a number of Excel sheets and try and slice and dice and merge the data to get the right report or pivot charts. And even at this, it may not be 100% accurate. Um, and then it's the inability to get a dynamic view of the data in real time. So you know you, if you have a sales meeting on a Monday, you're probably doing the same thing every Monday morning that consumes you know two or three hours of your time. Um, and even at that, it may not be 100% accurate. Uh, and that inability to get a dynamic uh, or that, that dynamic view of the data, you know, is just laborious. Uh, and you know, even things like determining ROI and marketing spend can be difficult and, and a best guess in circumstances because the data is disconnected. Uh, you know, it, a lot of organisations find it hard to say, well, did my marketing spend generate uh, customers? And it's very hard to do that. And and a lot of the times, it's just merely a, be, a, a best guess. There's no actual tangible metrics behind to say, well, we spent X on our marketing campaign and we got Y in terms of uh, new customers. Um, and last but not you know, least is you know what we're noticing you know in the more recent hurdle in the last four years is organisations are realising that customers are expecting a non-channel engagement and they don't have the tools or the processes to provide this. Um, and if they could, and if they try to do it with their legacy systems. It requires a large amount of development, which you know the cost-benefit analysis just isn't isn't there, um, and all these hurdles directly impact the ability for organizing the digital customer journey that uh, customers come to expect nowadays. Which is that you know, in order to do that, you need that connected customer view, identifying all the touch points to make sure that all communications are relevant and personalized. So you know. Why does this matter? Um, if we look at some of the statistics, you know, 67% of customers mention bad experience as a reason for going elsewhere. Um, and then if we say, you know, look at 72% of customers will share a positive experience with six or more people. So you can actually reap the rewards of providing a great customer experience. It's not just a nice to have, it's, it, it actually is beneficial. Um, but more interestingly, 
you know, it costs five times more to acquire a new customer than to satisfy and retain an existing customer. And that's probably a conservative figure because a lot of sur surveys suggest it could be in the range of seven to ten times more depending on the industry that you're in. Um, so we can see that providing a great customer experience is more than just a nice to have. It's imperative for survival in the digital age and organizations must evolve to ensure they meet the needs of their customers. So, you know, how can you do this? What can you do? You know, how can you provide this digital customer engagement for today's uh, customers? Uh, here in Storm, we've kind of identified four core elements that your business needs to focus on. Um, and we'll go into these in a bit more detail in the next couple of slides. But, you know, firstly is engage your customers. So you need to engage with your customers. But firstly, you need to understand how they like to engage. Is it email? Is it SMS? Is it phone? Is it web or social? And then you need to engage with them on a platform that they are most responsive, interactive, and comfortable with. Next, you need to empower your employees to deliver that customer experience to your customers. In order for you to engage across the various different platforms, you must provide the right tools and systems to your employees. Um, and then optimizing your operations to deliver that superior customer experience to your customers. So consistency is important. So using defined processes to guide your employees and using automations in circumstances where human interaction may not be necessary will aid in mitigating against inconsistent customer experience. And then, you know, we look at the customer behavior analytics, using that rich customer data to make informed business decisions um, because organizations nowadays are becoming more data driven. So we talk, we're going to talk about engaging with your customers, but I mean, Firstly, before you engage with your customers, you need to define your customer journey. What does that look like? So identifying your touch points is the first step towards creating a, a customer journey map uh, and making sure your customers are satisfied every step of the way. Knowing your touch points is only half the battle. To improve customer satisfaction, you need to make sure each touch point leads to a good customer experience and that the journey as a whole delivers on uh, customers' expectations. So once you have identified your touch points, you can then engage with your customers. So you know how you know if we look look at the, the different networks in which customers engage with you, and you can engage with your customers. We you know social, we have uh, SMS, we have email, we have the web, and you know typically we have phone. So Dynamics 365. You know if we if we address each one of these, Dynamics 365 provides Microsoft. You know provides uh, social analytics and social listening through Microsoft social engagement, and which provides the ability to monitor what your customer or prospective customer are saying about you across the social channels, such as Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and even blogs. And then, you know, it can provide sentiment analysis to determine how your brand is perceived, if it's positive or negative. Um, it also has intent analysis, so it can actually determine, based on the post, whether the customer is, if it's an information request, if it's a purchase, if it's a complaint, if it's a support request. Um, and you can actually respond to customers directly uh, on whatever you know, social network that, that they, they have communicated on. So you can actually retweet back from within uh, Microsoft social engagement. You can send a Facebook post, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and then we look at SMS. Um, you know, Dynamics 365 provides the, the capability to, to for push on the, push notifications and SMS is a very powerful communication uh, medium because if you think about it there's no spam folder in SMS um, and according to the like, digital marketing magazine people read 98% of text messages and usually respond to them within 90 seconds so it's, a, it's, it's an often a, a very overlooked uh, network uh, to communicate with your customers then if we look at you know email campaigns and uh, the ability to kind of send HTML rich emails to your customers um, and identify, you know, provide functionality such as uh, click heat map to see where your customer uh, customers are actually engaging within the email and how you can improve that. Um, it provides analytics on del deliverability such as open rates, bounce rates, unsubscribes. Um, Content in the emails can be dynamic. That's personalized, you you know, directly to the individual. That it surfaces the information onto the email that comes from their customer record. So you're delivering that personalized message, and then you can send you know 
things like uh, you can sell out customer satisfaction surveys as well, uh, which kind of keeps you in tune with you know are your customers happy and make sure you know that you're con constantly evolving and providing uh, that customer experience that that your customers are, are looking for. And then when we look at the web, you know, Dynamics 365 has web portals, so typically they can be used for things like uh, logging in for looking at your customer care cases. Customers tend to uh, nowadays look for the information themselves. They don't want to pick up the phone and talk to someone. They want the ability to actually go in and check the status of their cases without talking to anyone. And web portals are, are you know, in, in the functionality that, that can provide that with Dynamics 365. We also look at integrating with you know your web forms. Dynamics 365 can integrate with your existing web forms, you know, to to uh, facilitate a, a web to lead uh, process. And uh, and then obviously once they're created, the record is you know someone submits the form, the record is created in CRM. There's a call to action in CRM, so you can set up workflows that notifies people for follow up actions, or maybe they're they're put into you know a campaign automation flow. Um, and then we look at the web analytics. So we talked about the digital footprint that customers are leaving. Having you know all that information tracked on the pages that they visit, the products that they viewed on your website, tracked back in against the customer record provides you know invaluable information to allow you to actually go and, and target uh, specific um, demographics within your customer base uh, based on what they're looking at and the products they're looking at. Um, and then you know we look at the omni-channel, you know, customer care. So people, you know, are looking for, you know, if we think about traditionally in the past, it was someone rang up customer care and they got a, an issue resolved, or you know, now it's coming in through uh, email, it's coming in through social channels, and Dynamics 365 provides the ability actually to receive customer uh, communications uh, and re regard them as, as cases in um, Dynamics 365, but also they can actually communicate back out. You know, if we look at the, the likes of uh, social engagement, it can actually create cases from, from tweets or posts. So it's, pr it's providing that, you know, omni-channel customer care facility. Um, so the next step we want to look at is empowering your employees. Um, so if we if we think about you know the different areas within Dynamics 365 that can help, you know we think about mobility. Uh, native mobile phone and tablet apps ensure that no matter where your employees are, they can readily access and have up-to-date information. Um, we're currently working with a client who is providing tablets to, to all their sales reps to ensure that when they go for a customer meeting, they have up-to-date information and that the the context of the meeting is relevant. That you know they're not rocking into a meeting and you know misinformed on the information they are actually seeing live real time data on the customer and then following the meeting then they they'll use the notes and appointments follow up tasks to ensure that you know there's consistency in that they're actually following up on on the on the, the meeting actions and you know what that means for the customer it, it provides that experience that it's you know deep these guys are very professional. They come in, they know exactly what they need to talk about. They have all the information, but then they're also following up with me, you know, in a timely, in a timely fashion. And then if we look at Outlook, you know, Dynamics 365 integrates with Outlook, um, so communication to the customer can be tracked through Outlook. Uh, you know, you can surface Dynamics 365 email templates, which can be used to ensure consistent and professional look and feel. Dynamics 365 can be accessed directly from within Outlook itself, enable employees to be more responsive. So, um, you know, if a customer emails in, they can actually pull that information very quickly. They're not navigating to different windows to try and get the information, which means they can respond to customers quickly, which in turn um, will improve customer satisfaction. Um, and then we look at things like rela relationship health monitoring. Dynamics 365 is actually backed by artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms that come as a built-in feature in Dynamics 365. And what it does is it calculates the health of each relationship, such as calculate the time spent with the customer or warning if too much time has passed between the last interaction with clients. And ultimately, this helps them to be more productive in their daily tasks. So they're focusing on, you know, what they need to focus on at that particular time, uh, which ensures that, you know, again, it leads back to that customer satisfaction. Um, and then if we look in, in the context of, say, customer care, there's like an integrated knowledge base. Um, 
where relevant content for certain queries or issues can be stored uh, and consumed by customer care agents. They have the ability to both search and receive automated suggestions based on text in the case title. Um, and this ensures consistent communication is sent to the customers regardless of what agent is looking at the case and it reduces the time to resolve the case because the information is readily available. Um, again, this all lends to improving the customer satisfaction. And then when we look at you know, the reports uh, and metrics uh, that Dynamics 365 provides, you know, um, it can provide various uh, elements of your business with real-time up-to-date data which can quickly identify things such as you know, cases approaching near non-compliance of an SLA. Um, quotations which are due out next week um, and any appointments with customers are you know appointments that have not been met so you know in terms of management you can actually see that you know are, are your employees performing because you're after providing them with the tools so they need to follow up uh, with their customers to make sure again that continuous consistency in, in, the, in the customer experience um, you know, we also thought, you know, there's, a, there's also a deep integration with Office 365, uh, with Dynamics 365. So, you know, you can use uh, Excel and Word templates. You can consume Excel within Dynamics 365 itself. And, um, you know, it, it has one node integration, the Yammer uh, functionality in which you can, you know, collaborate uh, socially within the organization on, on various different opportunities and deals. Um, and then for document management, you know, you have OneDrive and SharePoint integration out of the box, which means that you know you can upload your documents, relevant documents, against the customer record and access them directly within Dynamics 365. Um, and then we, you know, there's Skype for business, uh, you know, for tel telephony communication. So it's it's really embedded in the Microsoft stack in that you know the seamless uh, integration between Office 365 and leveraging that uh, with Dynamics uh, 365 to you know aid in, in, in providing that customer experience but also uh, improve productivity. The next step then is about you know optimizing your op operations. So you know intelligent processes, predictive guidance, automating the engagement process to provide a consistent customer experience. So if we looked at things like campaign automation, uh, you can you know Dynamics 365 provides the ability to run nurture programs which you know, essentially are call to actions based on customer interaction. So if someone fills out a web form, they can actually go into a, a campaign automation flow in which that they're sent a follow-up email and it, it waits to see if they, you know, maybe respond or click a link and then they, they follow into a different flow. So what that does is it ensures the consistency that everyone gets the same consistent experience right to the point where there's a call to action from uh, like human interaction. So a lot of the time, you know, marketing can be very laborious in that they're sending emails, they're tracking emails, whereas campaign automation can, you know, look after all this for you. And, you know, when the customer is essentially sales ready, that, you know, the sales team are notified to say, look, these 10 people have passed through the campaign automation and now they're at a point in time where we can actually reach out and contact them and it's relevant. Um, we look at things like business process flows, which can be used to uh, guide users at the various different uh, predefined processes that can guide users at the various different intervals and communication points with the customer. Um, typically, your customers don't want to divulge all their information in one go. So, you know, if you define captures the information by piecemeal, you know, by the end of the process, you will have a full customer profile. Um, but then, on the back of these business processes, there's you know business rules for actually call to action so if you know depending on you know there's things like branch logic to determine well if the customer is interested in one type of product or, or another you can actually notify certain individuals maybe there's a more follow-up actions or more information required depending on the product they're looking at um, and then we look at things like customer insights which is again you know backed by this art, artificial intelligence and machine learning um, which the service is built on the Cortana intelligence suite and takes advantage of Dynamics 365 common data model. Uh, it collects data from a variety of sources such as Microsoft's own productivity software ecosystem, you know, Office 365, your ER, ERP solutions, social and web sources, and then provides a holistic view of your customers by scrutinizing sentiments, number of emails exchanged, email content, frequency of contact, and the time spent with customers. So it shows the interaction history and, uh, and all the various touch points in the timeline view. 
Again, it calculates the health of each relationship, um, um, such as calculating the time spent with the customer or warning if too much time has passed between the last interaction with the, with the clients, and ultimately help them to be more productive and reach out to, 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 to you know, the customers and they didn't need it most at the right time. Um, it can also be used to determine the RFM score, the recency, frequency, and monitoring value. You know, when did the last purchase? How often did the purchase? Uh, you know, how much did it typically spend? Uh, and you know, this in turn helps calculate the lifetime value of the customer, which in turn helps you to uh, identify your loyal customers. Uh, you know, and, and harness that. You know, and promote that customer loyalty uh, to to maintain your customer base. Um, and then you know we look at Microsoft Flow, which is you know a workflow management tool for automating workflows across the applications, not just Dynamics 365. It can be used for things like uh, automated approvals, sending and receiving notifications, synchronizing files, or connecting data. Uh, and a, a typical example would be you know to generate an, an alert for say a negative comment left on social media, that someone from customer care is alerted to say, look, you need to reply to this. Um, there's a negative sentiment in the email. So, and then you know we come to the last point about customer behavior analytics. So it's all that information that we're after talking about. You know, there's a lot of very rich information there. So you need to make data-driven um, business decisions, uh, innovate with new business models, and shift from reactive to proactive faster. So you know, if we think about all the data that we're capturing. You know, it's invaluable. You can actually see holistically view across your business and see, you know, what products are, you know, the, the most popular. You can identify trends, uh, such as if, you know, we're, we're, we've done proof of concepts in the past where we've done, you know, if you're ever on Amazon, you see, you know, you, you make a purchase before you check out. There's kind of a, a list of, well, if you bought this, you're more than likely, you know, you're interested in this. And we've we we've, we've worked with data sets where we actually can predict. You know, groupings of products where you know you can actually be proactive, engage your customers, and say, "Look, we think you might be interested in this." Like global economies are, are constantly affected by a variety of factors. Like those new markets are being shaped by demographic and behavioral shifts. New types of customers and dynamics and behaviors are shaping uh, commerce in unpredictable ways. And organizations have to be able to identify and react to this. So if you look at the likes of Kodak and Nokia, who once were leaders, giants in fact, uh, who appear to be almost invincible in their respective sectors, who fail to identify the changing dynamic of their industry and their customer behaviors and, and demands, and as a result were, were essentially left behind. So using fact-based decisions to drive your business strategy, powered by analytics, applied to rich data, enables your organization to you know, uh, more accurately define your strategy and uh, and be successful. So if we look at the data, we, you know, here we have we can see the all of view of your data in the system, but we also have that rich customer centric uh, information as well. What that'll do is, you know, you can identify your customer buying behavior. You can become more proactive rather than reactive. So if you take, for example, you have a product that has a lifespan of two years, you can actually go out and uh, and be proactive and engage with your customer. Because you identify trends in that, you know, instead of waiting for your customer to come back to you, you can actually reach out to them, and that kind of uh, reinforces their uh, understanding that yes, they actually know what I want, they know my needs, and they understand, uh, you know, what I want. Um, and then that helps identify cross-sell and upsell opportunities. So, you know, we mentioned about you know the, the proof of concepts that we're working on on suggested products. So having that data enables you to do that. Um, and then being able to expand your product or service offering to cater for your customer your customer needs. So it's about being agile enough to change because it, you know it's a never change in industry, and you need to be able to keep up and evolve with that. Um, so if we look at you know, let's talk about the Dynamics 365 advantage. You know, Dynamics 365 brings together a unique set of capabilities for organizations. Um, so Dynamics 365 is purpose built. With applications that fit roles, industries, and businesses, so organizations can start with and only pay for what they need, and grow at their own uh, at, at their own pace, uh, and run their entire business in the cloud. You know, uh, productive. You know, it's enabling greater productivity where people need uh, it by seamlessly integrating with familiar tools such as Outlook and Excel and Word, uh, and surfing, surfacing them in context of business processes, roles, and jobs. 
and then intelligence, you know, delivering built-in intelligence with business processes that infuses big data, uh, advanced analytics, and the Internet of Things proactively guide uh, employees and customers to optimal outcomes. And then adaptable, uh, enabling organizations to transform at the speed of business. Um, businesses can change and evolve their processes in real time using a modern, consistent, and extensible platform. So they're not being held back um, by legacy technology. So you know, I'm going to I'm going to wrap up. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, thank everyone for joining, and I'm just going to hand you back to Frank. Now. James, thank you. For, <coughs> excuse me, James. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm sure you've all found that very useful there. James covered an awful lot of points there from the digital landscape and how we, we use technology ourselves in Snapchat, Facebook. I was very surprised at some of the stats that James mentioned there. We're very, very, as a nation, we're very, very social savvy. Um, I also could c communicate with the common hurdles of disconnected systems, poor data, omni-channel. No more important at this time of the year, Christmas, we all want to be served by our providers at whether we're commuting into to work, whether we're sitting in the office, whether we're having lunch, whether it's on our iPad or mobile phone at our desktop. So we all want to be serviced in exactly the same way as if we were walking into the shop front. And we want exactly the same um, customer experience. Interesting points and some interesting stats there that 67% of the people will go elsewhere if they receive a bad customer experience and they'll tweet that out and that will go out to 12 to 15 people so obviously bad news travels fast and I'm sure we've all experienced it ourselves if we do get good customer experience we become loyal customers to a particular brand or a particular company. We touched on there the Dynamics 365 about the Microsoft social engagement, how you can listen in, how you can retweet, empowering your staff by mobility integrated knowledge bases, you know, which is very good because again, you know, there's nothing worse than ringing a company and giving them all your information and then being passed through to another department and having to repeat yourself, having to explain why you're ringing up where if you have an integrated knowledge base, obviously you're serving your customer a lot better. Optimization reading customer behavior, integration again, I come back to that integration again where we can integrate the web portals and good customer insights. So as I say, we covered an awful lot there and I thank you very much to James and we hope you found today's webinar of interest and I'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, what's next? Um, customer engagement, um, if you're interested in finding out more about how to start or progress or your organization on its own, digital customer engagement, be, be that bold end-to-end -end enterprise digital transformation program or the development of a single digital business application, we would like to invite you to talk to us further or come and join us for a customer engagement workshop. We would like to have a customer engagement workshop which would be tailored specifically designed for your business where we will do a deep dive into strategies, technologies and user adoption approaches that can help you along your digital journey. The workshop can be designed to focus in all or one of the following areas depending on your unique needs of your business. So we can talk about the end-to-end -end digital engagement, digital intelligence, digital operations and a digital employment engagement. My email address there, if any of you would like, you can contact me if they've got any queries in relation to what we covered today and I will be in touch with you in the coming days. Thank you very much. Bye.